All right. So welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining again. Uh, we are the product success team. I am Rodney. And I'm Lex. And today we'll be going over the Aldelo POS migration to Aldelo Express. There are other import options to create an Aldelo Express store, and we will cover that in the coming weeks. But the focus today will be on the Aldelo POS to Aldelo Express migration. Again, if you have any questions, please keep your questions related to the topic at hand. Please keep yourselves muted during the presentation. However, if you do have an immediate question, you can ask your questions in the chat. We will be monitoring the chat as always. Otherwise, you can ask your questions verbally when we open up the floor for questioning. Just make sure to unmute yourselves at that time. All right, so what are the benefits? Uh, for Aldelo POS users, it will provide a smoother transition when moving to Aldelo Express. With the proper training, the end user will be able to recognize that their menu is the same and a lot of the information, whether it be their own employee accessibilities, their existing customers, discounts, fees, tables, so on and so forth, are the same or similar. They just need training to learn how to navigate the application. The next benefit is the process is very simple. In a nutshell, the main steps are just to create the import file from the Aldelo POS server station and attach that file when creating the store. We will be getting into this in more detail in a few slides. You will definitely save time importing as this process can be done in as little as five minutes. Building a new store from scratch can take quite some time. If Aldelo builds the menu for an Aldelo Pay customer, we estimate the time of completion at three to five business days. It can be more, can be less, depending on the complexity of the menu and support call volumes. And that's just for the menu build. This does not include adding employees, making, ex making the extensive setting adjustments to match or closely match the workflow the end user has been comfortable with when using Aldelo POS. That being said, a good number of settings do transfer over. And if you as a rep build their store, that's hours of your own time that you have to put in. Now, you, you may ask, what if a customer's existing Aldelo POS database is too messy? There are a lot of items no longer being used, or many variations of the same modifiers exist that just clutter the POS. It is way faster to, to clean or delete unwanted items and modifiers and keep the existing transferable settings than starting from scratch. If they already have an existing Aldelo POS database, use it to your advantage. You can get your customer completely set up sooner rather than later. All right, so what will import? First, we have the menu items. The button colors, if those are defined, will transfer. Open pricing, um, bearing pricing based off of the services available. If they are defined, um, the report category for these items, the printers that the assigned printers that these items will print to. So that'd be the printer numbers. Um, if these items are quantity based, it will keep the countdown quantity and the taxes that apply, taxes one, two, three, or even tax free transfer over. And the auto pricing will transfer over as well. So if they are scheduled for happy hour, that schedule transfers over. Next are the modifiers. So the force modifier and advanced modifier templates, um, those structures will transfer over as well. And if these modifiers have pricing defined for them, those transfer over as well. Okay, active employees will transfer over, their passcodes that are defined, their POS security levels, their pay type and pay rate, whether they are salaried or hourly, and their rates transfer over their POS accessibilities, um, their work schedule, and their time cards, even their historical time cards. So um, what happens to the historical time cards? Do they get uh, transferred over? Yes, the horse historical does get transferred over. Um, and, and I did mention that, the, that they are active employees. Um, if you have historical employees that are no longer active, um, their setting has been set to hidden. Um, those do not transfer over. All right, the next is the hostess. So the groups and tables, they too, do transfer over. However, um, it does not transfer over the table layout. 
Um, these can be adjusted on the Adobe Express iPads, and it will have to be done in-app. Now, customer profiles will transfer over as well. Um, so if the, if the store has an extensive number of, of customers, those will be transferred over. Now, these can also be transferred over after the store is built, but it does require transferring information onto a, a spreadsheet and uploading that to the cloud. So that may take time as well. Now you have miscellaneous charges and discounts. So your discounts, your existing discounts will transfer over surcharges. Um, if there is a auto gratuity that is triggered by guest count, those transfer over. The, if they have a customized suggested gratuity, that number will transfer. Then you have your delivery charges and delivery or driver comps. Those transfer over on the base level. But if you also have postal codes where there are different pricing for delivery charges and delivery comps based off of the postal code, those transfer over as well. Then you have your inventory. Um, so the inventory, inventory will transfer, but they can only be viewed in app on the iPad version. Right, so what will not transfer over? First is sales data, in-house accounts, and there's also security settings. Those do not transfer over. Although Express uses the, uh, the default settings there, and they can be changed on the cloud after the store is created. Gift cards will not transfer over. That can be done after the store is built and gift is, is set up. And the group and item pictures, for the menu, those do not transfer over. And various station settings do not transfer over either. And then your hardware connections. So these printers in these printers that are set up um, that print to different kitchen printers or different receipt printers, um, those will have to be set up on the app level as well. And also with your payment devices, if they are using EMV, um, those do not transfer over. They will have to be set up on the app for app as well. And they also have to be registered prior to that. And now that we have an idea of what will and will not transfer, let's go over the process. Okay, so the customer has to be on the server station. So the station hosting the database. And first you wanna verify the database. So you wanna make sure, because there, there could be multiple stations that could have a server and multiple clients, they have to be on the station that is hosting the database. Now, if you go into the back office of Aldelo POS, the, the path file will show on the right-hand corner and you wanna make sure it's set to local. You do not wanna use a shared path. And next you wanna make sure that all the, the client stations are closed. So when you run the import, you don't wanna have any other the client stations open because accessing, accessing the database while extracting the information may cause database corruption. Then you also wanna get the database ready by running a short compact there. And this also does require the client stations to be closed. And then you can go to our download site. So aldelo.com slash downloads, download the migration tool and then run it. And once it's run, all you have to do is click on export and it will create a file. And you just have to name the file and save it. And it's best to save it in a location that's easy to remember, um, preferably your desktop, or maybe even on a thumb drive if they wanna do the import from a different station. So once you have that file, you're ready to go. Okay, the next step is to build a store. So you have to go to my.aldolo.express, and if you already have an existing account, you can go ahead and log in and click on stores and then create a new store. Or if this is going to be a brand new account, you can create your store. And once you, once you get in, it will prompt to create a new store. So on the upper right, there will be an option for import setup from APOS. And once you click on the button, it'll prompt you to select the file. So you'll locate the file and attach it. And it will say it was successfully attached. And then there is the form that you have to complete. Now, some of this information is extracted from the, the import file, but there are other required information that has to be completed as well, like um, city and state um, and, the, and the type of restaurant. And once that is all completed, 
you will build the store. And if it's successfully built, the store will, will reflect there with the new subscriber ID and the new store. And it is highly recommended to review the imported store to make sure everything is transferred successfully. And if some of the settings have to be updated, you can make those changes then. Again, the best option to, to transition existing Aldolo POS customers to Aldolo Express is to migrate their existing store. The information is already there, use it. The industry has been trending towards tablet-based POS. This migration process makes it easy for Aldelo POS customers to transition to a tablet-based POS in Aldelo Express. So with that, do we have any questions? I don't see any questions in the chat. Okay. So if there's no questions in the chat, does anyone, anyone want to ask any questions verbally? You can go ahead and unmute yourselves at this time. So what happens if the import fails? All right, if the import fails, we do recommend running running a, a, a compact of the database again. Um, and if that fails after that point, we do recommend you contact our support team and they can assist. Can you import information a second time? No, um, that is not a feature. Yeah, once your store is uh, already updated, um, there's only certain information that can be imported after that, and that is the, the customer files and if they're using GIFT, um, their external GIFT cards. Now, if your store was created and then you're making some updates, you can go ahead and delete the store and then do an, another import after. So, Yeah, so create, creating a new store. Thanks, Kate. Good, good point, Lex. Hello. This is Jose. How are you? Hey, Jose. Uh, I just, uh, no, good, good. I was uh, checking about how they import the export the database from a pizzeria. And only, yes, uh, you can notice when you create an uh, item and uh, I don't know, you know, in the back office and you put like, as a pizza mm -hmm. and that and that item somehow when you export to Aldel Express, you're not gonna take any of the properties like uh, of the, all the uh, modifiers and all the toppings, you know? So I have a big issue with one of my customers. So when they create the other way, you know, because there is two ways, you can go to the pizza builder uh, mm -hmm. to create pizzas and you can create only a single pizza with a single name. So when so that just... happens, you're yeah, just creating as a regular item instead of using the pizza build? Right. So okay. I think, uh, correct. And uh, what happened there, this customer makes all the pizzas in that area, not on the pizza builder. So when you try to export to Aldel Express, it's, uh, it's impossible to do it. So then we, we, we got to start from scratch. Just notice that. <laughs> yeah, in some cases, if, if the pizza build wasn't wasn't used properly, it doesn't transfer the way it's meant to. So if, if they do create a pizza using the pizza builder from Aldolo POS correctly, it should transfer no no problem. I've seen issues when I was in support where they they finagled the, the pizza build and that, that information didn't transfer over well at all. But yeah, in that case, if it didn't transfer over, um, it's best to recreate the, re recreate the item in the cloud through, using the pizza builder. All right. Okay, and do we have any other questions? Thank you, Jose. No, for the export and import database, I'm okay. Okay, good. <laughs> All right, anybody else? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to Lex here for a live demonstration. Okay, so you should be able to see my screen. Um, I'm using Adela POS here. So I'm gonna go into a couple of the settings here just so you can show you that I do have menu items in here. I have my table layouts for my dining room. I have my appetizers. I also enabled countdown as well. Some of these items have pictures 
the entree has a picture and then I also updated some of the the buttons with colors as well. And then if I go into time cards in here, you'll notice that I also set up time cards for a couple of my employees here. These will also get transferred. And then if I go into the back office, um, I can go into menu setup and then auto pricing. Auto pricing will also uh, automatically uh, load as well. I enable it for the beverages, beverage one, two, three, four. Um, by going to menu items, I hid some items in here. So you'll see that the hidden items um, will also um, update or it'll be included. So as you can see, I have appetizer five. So that the appetizer five is a hidden hidden item, right? Yeah, that's correct. I hid it. Yep. Okay. I also hid um, one uh, modifier, which is zucchini as well. So you'll see that in here. So. I have an inactive uh, modifier here. And we'll take a look at the employees. I also have one employee, um, oh, sorry, uh, employee that I hid as well. So if I click show all employees, you'll see one here for John Doe. That person will not be um, uploaded, so. Before I talk about um, importing, I want to talk about which items do not get transferred, uh, which are gift cards. They don't get transferred. However, you can migrate over on a separate migration. Item pictures does not get transferred over. There are no sales data that get transferred. House accounts don't get transferred. The security settings don't get transferred either. However, the Employee security does get transferred. So for example, we'll have one in here for uh, Martinez. Um, his security level is three. So it'll that'll, that'll transfer. The hardware connections between stations will not uh, transfer. Actually, any uh, station um, settings won't uh, transfer. Okay, so once I'm ready to import, I do need to verify that this is the station that's hosting the database. And you can tell by going into the back office and taking a look at the upper right-hand corner, it says local. If you are using a monitor that has the four by three aspect ratio, this will not show up here. So you want to click on select database on the left side and it'll display here, the C drive or D drive that those will work. Hey Lex, I, I, I just have one, one thing to just add to this. How does top level items transfer over? Um, th they'll transfer over, yeah. Because every time I've done it, and then you go into the tablet, the top level items are not active. You actually have to go into it and then back out to activate it. Yeah, yeah. So you have to um, um, so it puts that out of stock, right? No, that's on uh, uh top level items. I don't know if you have any top level items set up. Hmm. Let me just add one here real quick. Okay, so as you can see, I added my, my top level here. Um, I'll, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, import the file. So like I said, you just make sure that the database on is on a local network or a local drive here. 
And once I confirm that, I'm just going to uh, compact the database real quick. And then okay, I can exit the software now. And as mentioned, you, you want to exit from the client stations as well. Yeah. And then from here, you just need to go to adello.com forward slash download. You're going to scroll down about halfway through the screen. You'll see Adello POS 2 Express iPad POS. You're going to click download here. And then just click download if it didn't download for you. All right, as you can see, I have I do have a warning on the top, so I'm going to click on the See More. And then I'm going to click on the three dots here, and then I'm going to click Keep. From here, I do need to confirm that I want to keep anyways. Yeah. Right? So that's that's all dependent on your browser security. So, Yeah. And then from here, I'm just going to open up the file. Okay, so you should see a, a POS convert tool open up. I'm going to click export. And then from here, I just need to save on my uh, computer. I'm going to save on my uh, documents folder. Once I have that file, I'm going to go log into my Adelo Express account. I'm already, as you can see, I'm already logged in here. I'm going to go to stores on the left. And then from here, I need to click on create new store. And then from here, I'm going to select import setup from APOS. All right. And then I'm going to select the Adelo POS to express a demo here. And then I do need to make a couple changes like the store name. And then I do need to make sure that the taxes are correct here. Um, and then I need to select my industry category. Let's do um, table service. Then do cuisine as American. And then style is just other. And then from here, once I confirm that everything is correct, I'm going to go ahead and click next. And then I have my... Um, access code that I'm going to enter in for the creator of the store. And then I'm going to click build store now. All right, as you can see, the um, creation of the store is, was successful. I have product success demo number two here. I'm going to go in and manage my store here. And on the left, we're going to click on marketing and customers. So as you can see, the customer data did get pulled from the point of sale and then from here we're going to click on products and then item setup as you can see here we have appetizers and the very bottom you see the top level item that we just added inside Adela POS it was transferred over as well and when we click inside the uh, top level and if I scroll down as you can see the uh, test one and two got added to the, um, the store as well now, if you wanted to show the discontinued items, you can click on the discontinued items here on the top right-hand corner. And then as you can see, we have Appetizers 5, which we hid inside Adela POS. I'm going to go ahead and click on this. And when we scroll down, you can uh, delete this if you no longer need this item here. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the item. All right, and then if I go into uh, my entree here, we can click on entree one. You'll see that this item has force modifiers that got transferred over 
as well as the advanced modifiers that got transferred as well. So I'm going to click on edit here. And then as you can see, we have select dressing. So these got all transferred from the point of sale. Now I did a hide a modifier. So we're going to click on include discontinued modifiers in search. I'm going to go ahead and say yes there. Just type in the, the item name. So as you can see, we have zucchini fries here. I'm going to go ahead and click on this. So since I don't need this item, I can delete this item here. So I'm going to click on delete modifier permanently. And I'm going to go ahead and say yes. All right, so now the item is no longer here. And now we're going to go to advanced pricing. I'm going to go search for my beverages. And as you can see, I already have the scheduled uh, added here. So if I click on the schedule added, as you can see, the time is already added. The prices for this are 50 cents rather than $1. All right, now, now let's go take a look at the staff here. We're going to click on the employees. If I click on the include release em employee in search, you'll see that the John Doe is not here. So the database for hidden employees do not transfer over. And as you can see, the security levels are different between each employee as well. Now, if I click on Chancho, I'm going to click on Show Extended Settings. You see the pay rate also transferred over. And if I go to Time Cards, click on Chancho, you can see that there's a time card added to this employee here on the 16th. And if I go to pay, pay period, I can click on search end of pay period history. You can see it tracked back all the way last year. So that's how far I went back. It can uh, go even further. So, And then obviously, um, because of the security settings, you do need to make sure that you update your security uh, config by going in, uh, through each one of these uh, topics here and make sure you adjust um, the security levels per, per store. So, all right, we're actually going to go back to the products. I forgot to show you the items, uh, the printer settings. So I'm going to go to appetizer two. We're going to scroll down, click on show extended settings here. And then when we scroll down, as you can see, it's set to prints to kitchen two. We go back, we click on appetizer three. This one's set to kitchen three. And if we go back one more, we click on appetizer four. As you can see, it's set to prints to kitchen number four. So all of those information did get imported from Adela POS. Now we're gonna switch over to the iPad. As you can see, I already entered in my uh, username. I'm just going to click on login here. All right, so I'm logging on to the store now. I'm going to select existing store. And we're going to select product success demo number two. I'm going to enter in device number, number one. All right, so the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and Hide the play tutorial by clicking on the the three lines or the hamburger button, and we're just going to click on hide tutorial video. From here, I'm going to click on hardware because the first thing we have to do is enable our hardware for the devices. We're just going to say yes to the printer. And then if you have a payment device, you want to go ahead and set that up as well. You want to make sure you do this for every iPad that you have. And then we're going to go inside 
this um, station here. I'm going to click on the three dots on the right side. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to host this and we're going to move the tables around. So just hold down uh, one finger on the item and then you can move the items around. Now, if you have multiple groups or uh, rooms, you want to swipe to to the right to access the other rooms. Okay, so the table layouts, the tables did get uploaded. However, you, you still need to move them to where they need to uh, go. Okay, we're going to back out. And then from here, we're going to um, um, select dine in. I'm going to select the table here. And as you can see, the appetizers, uh, one, two, three, and four got added. And we also have the pop-up um, header here. And as you can see, we have test number one, test number two. I can select appetizer number one. Uh, the countdown did go down to 98. If I select entree, for example, as you can see, the picture for the entree did not transfer over. However, the colors did transfer over. We have our modifiers here. And the last option in here is the inventory. So if I click on the three dots on the right side, and then I'm going to click on inventory. As you can see it has groups, locations, vendor, UOM, inventories, and we also have recipes here. Now, do we have any other questions? I do have a question on the table layer. Uh, mm -hmm. I know on iPad, we have no problems to move tables around, but I have a big issue with my last customer. He complains a lot because on the Android devices, you cannot move tables. So it's kind of confused for the servers to to yeah. locate the tables on the stations. Yeah, that is correct. So um, the table layouts for Androids is not a feature. Um, so if you need to move tables around, you have to use a iOS device. Uh, yeah, and uh, the question will be, uh, I know we can uh, not use Android devices on the table areas. So do you think uh, they are planning to fix this issue or uh, or work on this issue? Um, we, I mean, we don't talk about uh, new features, so that's something that I, even I don't know. Okay, just to put it in the notes because this is a big problem for this restaurant. Okay. okay any other questions? So I don't see any questions coming up for you guys. All right. So I saw in the chat we do have a. We did post some our, our links to our YouTube page. Again, we ask if you can subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. So with that, we do thank you for joining, and we will see you again next week.